Hi friends! If you haven't heard, artificial intelligence and machine learning are the next big things in tech. They're actually already exploding, and the fact that you're here and building your skills in this area is awesome. So let's dive right in and look at Amazon's machine learning platform, which is SageMaker. Let me switch over to the AWS management console here. If you need a quick video on how to set up an AWS account and get here, then check out the video linked above. I'm going to navigate to SageMaker. I'll just type that in here. SageMaker, of course, is AWS's fully managed machine learning service that lets you build, train, and deploy ML models at scale. Just a brief word about cost, though. If we switch over to pricing, you'll see that SageMaker is available on the free tier for two months. And you'll see the details here of what you get. But just know that after the two months, you will incur various charges, which you can find lower down on the page right here. So just be aware of that. If you're going to follow along with anything here in the demo, I'll show you how to shut everything down at the end, so make sure that you stick around for that. Okay, but back to SageMaker in the console. SageMaker Studio is the IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, that you're going to use to do all of your ML work. So let's go set that up now. I'll click on SageMaker Studio. If you don't already have a SageMaker domain set up, it's going to take you to this page to set one up. You'll see it's the central store to manage the configuration of SageMaker. You've got two options, the quick setup or the standard setup. I'm going to go with quick setup here. And then scrolling down, you'll need a user profile. I'll just go with the default. And then you also need an execution role. If you don't have one set up already like I do, you can choose create new role, and that'll walk you through how to set it up with the correct permissions and access to S3 buckets and so on. Really easy to do, but I'll go with the one that I already have and say submit. So behind the scenes, our quick start is setting up everything we need. This will take a few minutes, so I'll pause the video and be right back. All right, once that completes, you'll want to come over here to Launch App. And then you've got options for Studio or Canvas. And another shameless plug, I do have a video about Canvas. It's a new app just released this past week. It's pretty cool. So check that out if you're interested. The link above and below. But we are going to go into Studio. This might also take a minute or two, so once again, I'll pause the video and be right back. All right, once that finishes, you should get dropped into a SageMaker jumpstart here in SageMaker Studio. There's lots of really good information here, featured content solutions, different kinds of models, algorithms, and so on. So feel free to peruse and just check things out. Just to kind of show you a little bit more about the interface and how to move around, I'm going to choose one of these solutions. Scrolling over here, there's one that makes a pretty good demo, the handwriting recognition. So I'll click into this. For each of the solutions, you'll have the option to launch the solution, which is going to build the infrastructure for you that underlies everything. This one in particular, though, you'll see that it says if you haven't used AWS Cognito before, you need to allow some extra permissions before you launch it. So this one's a little bit special. They're not all going to have this requirement. But let's go ahead and update the IAM permissions if you scroll down. There's some instructions down here, and then we'll get things launched. Increase the size of this so you can see it a little bit better. So it's telling us to go out to the IAM console under roles and search for this role. So I'll grab that and put it on my clipboard. I've got the AWS management console open and recently was in IAM, but you can also just type in IAM up here, identity and access management, of course. And then I'll go over to roles. I'll paste that role in and select it. And then what we need to do is add inline policy and then come up to the JSON tab. And back here in our notebook, there's some code that you need to paste in. So I'll just grab all of this, replace everything here, review policy. We need to give it a name. So once again, back over here, it tells us to use cognito-inline-policy. A little bit hard to see, but cognito-inline-policy. And then we'll create the policy. So again, this is just a specific instruction for this particular lab that you need to run before you launch anything. So whatever lab you're in or solution you're in, just make sure you're reading all the instructions. So now that that's done, we're going to start the launch. This will take just a minute. So I'll start that, and then we'll look at the rest of the notebook a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So back here, just looking in a little more detail, this solution is going to be working with handwriting recognition. 
applying deep learning techniques to basically take a handwritten image or text like this, identify the handwritten words, and then transcribe or try to figure out what those words are. There's also this architecture diagram here of what's being set up for us. So when we hit that launch button, there's basically a cloud formation template out there that specifies all the resources we need. So there's gonna be an Amazon S3 bucket, SageMaker notebooks, ground truth, and an endpoint that we'll use to deploy the trained model. This particular solution also has several different stages and each has its own notebook. We're not gonna go through all of these, but I'll just get you started. So you'll see that we're in the introduction here, high level overview of the solution, and then you can progress through the other stages as well. All right, let's see how we're doing on launch. Only 20% complete. While we're waiting for that, if you're finding this useful so far, I greatly appreciate you hitting the like button so it can reach more people and also consider subscribing to get more AWS and other content like this. All right, this is gonna take a few more minutes, so I'll pause the video and be right back. Okay, that's complete. You'll see generated artifacts down here. We've got the endpoint and the model. Next, what we wanna do is open up the notebook, which you can click right here to open notebook. You can also get to that at any time over here under the folders, S3 downloads, jumpstart, and then here's all the different notebooks for this particular solution. We're starting in zero underscore demo underscore notebook. So all of this got downloaded when we went to launch the solution. All right, down at the bottom, you'll see that the kernel is starting. This is basically the engine that'll execute your code. And if you look up here on the top, it says when running this notebook in SageMaker Studio, make sure to run the SageMaker Jumpstart MXNet 1.0 image and kernel. Up in the very top right, that's the one that's selected that's starting up for us right now. So we're all good there. But if you click on this, you can always change the kernel as well. And you've got a bunch of different options here for images. And depending on which image you choose, you'll have different kernels too. So FYI there, we'll give this just a few more seconds to finish starting. While we're waiting, if you come over here under this button, you can also see the kernels, the instances, the apps, the terminals, and so forth that are running. So once this gets booted up, we'll be able to see that here. And there you go, things are coming up. So the instance, that's the underlying compute for all of this. We've got the jumpstart app running, and then the kernel that's finally booted up as well. You can shut things down here too, either by hitting the power button here, shutting down, or you can shut down everything in the section if there's multiple kernel sessions or apps or so forth. So that's a good little window to know about. But let's move over here to the notebook and run some of this code. Now again, the point of this video isn't to teach you Python or Jupyter Notebooks or anything. This is just one example that you can follow along with to kind of get a feel for how SageMaker Studio works, how to navigate around some of the main functionality. But for this particular example, I'll just put my mouse here in this cell. These first two cells, we're just getting things set up. We're installing a 3D graphics library, and then we're gonna import various other libraries. To run code in a notebook, you can either hit the play button up here to run the code in the selected cell. You can also hit shift enter, which is what I tend to do. So I'll run that. And for this particular one, I did hit up on some errors. If you get an error like this, what I ended up doing to get around it was above the install, sudo apt and then update. And if you run that before the install, let me just clear this initial output. We'll run this cell again. And the update command will go out and download and update package information from all the different available sources. And that'll get us past that error. Again, not super specific to SageMaker Studio, but I just wanted to get you past that if you hit that error. I'll come down, execute this next cell. Here's where we import things so we can actually work with the code. And then down in this demo section here, this is where we see the handwriting recognition in action. I'll place my mouse here and then come up to run and we'll run selected cell and everything below. So just let that go. And then scrolling down, here you'll see some handwritten text. So three examples, Switzerland, you'll see that we recognize that one perfectly. Berlin, not so much, Rome, not so much. But if you continue scrolling down, you can move on to the next notebook, click here, and this will open up one underscore introduction. So I mentioned there's multiple notebooks for this particular solution, and you can work through this and refine that handwriting recognition to get everything just right. 
Okay, so there's a lot more to dig into. Again, feel free to peruse this solution or others, but very, very importantly before you go, you need to tear down all the resources that got set up. Otherwise, you might end up with a surprise bill at the end of the month, and that's never fun. So we want to come back to our solution page where we initially launched the solution and then the notebook. And if you scroll down, there's a button here to delete all resources, and that is what you want to do. Click on that, confirm. Okay, I'm going to close out of these notebooks here as well. And then I also like to come over here and just shut everything down. The instances, the apps, the kernels, whatever I have running, if I'm done for the day, I just shut everything down. And there we go. Now, just to be extra, extra sure, I also like to go into the AWS Management Console and make sure there's nothing that kind of got missed or left behind. So the first stop will be SageMaker. And there's a few things you need to check in here. First, go under Inference. Check for Endpoints. Should be empty. Endpoint Configurations. Looking good. Models. Make sure everything got deleted there. And then up under Notebook, check for Notebook Instances. Everything's gone, which is perfect. You can also check S3. So there are various things that get downloaded here when you spin up a solution. I have several buckets here from other work that I've done. I'm going to choose the one with today's date. Look inside of here. There's no objects. There's no cost associated with an empty bucket, so it's fine to leave this. You could delete it, though, if you wanted to, but I'm happy with that. And then the last place you might want to check is CloudWatch. Here come under Logs, Log Groups, and then anything that starts with AWS SageMaker you can get rid of these log groups here. Up under Actions, Delete Log Groups, and you should be good to go. So there you go. That's how to get started with SageMaker Studio. If you found this helpful, check out my AWS playlist for more videos, and feel free to drop a comment below to let me know how things are going for you in SageMaker. Thanks so much for watching.